And most sales professionals and most companies don't lose deals to the competition. They lose deals to the status quo. And if there's no trust, there's not enough momentum to get past the status quo. Well, hey there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossman, and joining me today is a brand new rock star. I'm super excited to talk to him. He's a growth, uh, revenue growth strategist. I like that title. He's a best-selling author, and he's a keynote speaker. Daryl, Amy, thank you so much for joining me today. Kirby, it's great to be here. This is going to be fun. It is. It is. So, you know, I did a little bit of stalking on you before we got the chance to, to sit down and chat. And so one of the things I know about you, if you you're a person who's created a, a business around mission and purpose, and I love that. So why do you think it's important to have like a higher calling when it comes to business? Well, for the main reason is business is hard. <laughs> I mean, let's not sugarcoat this. There are, there are moments. Business is wonderful. I, I absolutely enjoy um, business, enjoy sales, enjoy marketing, enjoy getting those aligned to accelerate growth. All of that's it is. There's some fun moments, but it has its moments. Business is hard. In order to be successful, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to deal with some things that are hard and uncomfortable. And I think the only way to truly, I mean, you can be motivated by money, fame, fortune, all of that, yeah. but look, the research says at some point you're getting, you know, there's only so much of that that's going to make you uh, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Really the reality is I think there's the, the real thing is what's your purpose. And, and I, I've I sit on the board of a couple of nonprofits and you, let me just bottom line it. There's lots of wonderful, great donors and we appreciate every one of them. But when it comes to the type of uh, people that can write the checks with commas in them. They're business owners, right? right. And business owners that are saying, I want to be purpose driven, purpose focused in my business. And I get fired up about that because when I see someone who is purpose uh, driven, purpose focused in their business, they know their why, they have a mission and a real meaning behind it, hopefully making the world a better place while also providing great jobs, yeah. then they can get fired up about coming to business, uh, to work in the morning and yeah. doing, you know, even the drudgery parts of business yeah. because they know it's aiming at something important. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I saw, I think it was Bert Jacobs, him and his brother founded Life is Good. And it was one of the early mm -hmm. conferences I went to. And he, he talked about the idea of a for-profit business being like one of the most powerful um, forces for good in the universe when done right. Because if it's purpose-driven, those are the folks who can write the checks with the commas. In. And That's so right. I, love, I love the way you say that. So I think that makes a ton of sense. So I, I'm curious. I mean, obviously you've been doing this for some time. So how has marketing and sales changed in this post COVID world that we've all sort of lived through and hopefully it's getting better, but how can, how can companies adjust? Well, the interesting thing is um, in some ways, marketing and sales hasn't changed. And that's the problem <laughs> behind all of this. We're still doing the same things we did before, mm. uh, just sometimes doing them harder. You know, like right. when, when COVID, uh, when the pandemic started, uh, everyone started doing the same ineffective email campaigns, yeah. just more. <laughs> we carbon bombed <laughs> the world, right? And, and so I think that um, that. One thing, there are a couple of things that are very true. First of all, um, we live in a post-trust world. Mm. We live in a world, I mean, look at the, you know, wow. this, this concept of trust, which is the currency of sales, right? Mm. Um, Stephen M. R. Covey wrote a book, uh, Business at the Speed of Trust. And he basically mm. said, Hey, when there's trust, we're good to go. Green lights, when there's no trust or low trust. Everything and, and most sales professionals and most companies don't lose deals to the competition. They lose deals to the status quo. And if there's no trust, there's not enough momentum to get past the status quo. So I think one of the realities in our world now, um, not just because of the pandemic, but because of so many different forces is in some ways, trust is at an all time low. And so it is very, very critical that as marketers and sales professionals, we set ourselves up to uh, establish trust quickly and grow it. And uh, we talk a lot about this on the Selling from the Heart podcast, which I co-host with my good friend, Larry Levine. But we're, um, you know, we're saying, hey, look, you know, you've got to come to the table with a strategy for trust that blends authentic relationship and meaningful value 
and multiplies it times inspirational, may mm. I insert joyful experiences and, and back it with disciplined habits. And so, you know, right now it's critical that we, uh, in this, in this post trust world, it's not just a post pandemic world, right. it's a post trust world right now. Um, we've got to nail that. And I think this is so, so very important. Um, and then the other thing is we've got to be right now because there's so little attention. I mean, we've got our, we, we have finely tuned filters mm. to keep noise out. Otherwise we'd go insane. We all yeah. know we're marketers. <laughs> there's thousands and thousands and thousands of messages coming at us now. It's only accelerated. So it's incumbent upon us. The change that we need to shift is we need to get out of the marketing mush, the corporate buzzword soup that we put out there and really, truly listen and understand the specific outcomes that our buyers want and communicate those things, because that's really the only thing that's going to get through the noise right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so marketers and sales professionals that are really understanding the outcomes, we coach people how to do that in the revenue growth engine book. Uh, this is so core and so pivotal to getting attention and even having the opportunity to begin to build trust. Yeah. I think it's super interesting that the idea of listening builds trust right? The two go, do go hand in hand, yes. right? Like, yes. And so that, that makes a ton of sense to me. So I, I'm a big believer in goals, right? I, I, I set them quarterly. and But I, I think it's interesting to see how many people don't, right? And I think mm -hmm. people really struggle to set them. So how do you think that you set aggressive goals, which I'm a big fan of, but they don't completely overwhelm you? I love this question. And I speak, uh, you know, when I'm, I'm speaking to groups of business owners or doing growth strategy workshops, we're usually beginning with the end in mind another yes. that Stephen Covey, Stephen on, Covey on setting the goals. And so here's what I found. I want to speak specifically to revenue goals. I'm going to do a whole other conversation on personal goals because I'm right. with you hundred percent on that. But I want to talk about revenue goals for your business. When it comes to setting revenue goals, there's usually two ways I've observed that businesses set revenue goals. The first and most common way is what I call the spaghetti on the wall method. Hey, Kirby, what do you think we can do next year? <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the entrepreneurial visionary guy like me is like, whoa, it's hit the moon. And the more conservative <laughs> operational integrator guy, person is like trying to go low. Yeah. We, we just come up with something. And then we get to about, you know, August, uh, July in the year, we're not hitting the goal. And everyone goes, you know what they say, ah. Oh, well, that wasn't a realistic goal in the first place. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Okay. The other way people set goals is what I like to call the ruler method, right? So with the ruler method, here we go. We go, we did this last year. We did this the year before, and I'm just going to draw a line and that will be our goal for the next year. Right. Um, there's a couple of problems with this. First of all, you might be leaving massive amounts of money on the table. Mm. The other problem is we just came out of a pandemic. So for some <laughs> companies, the ruler, if you were selling like plexiglass and personal protective equipment, Killing you it. had a really good year, <laughs> you know, you, your ruler, that trend is, you know, not realistic. If you had a, you know, if, yeah. if you had a, a rough time during the pandemic, and I don't want to make fun of that at all, because some businesses didn't even survive. Right. Um, in that case, the trend is not your friend. We got to grow. So here's how I coach people to set goals, ditch the spaghetti on the wall, get rid of the ruler and drill down to the two things that drive growth in any business. There's only two sources of revenue, net new and cross sell net new is you know how many new customers or clients are we bringing on board? Um, number two, what is our revenue per customer? How effective are we at cross-selling more products and services to our existing clients? And so if you think about that, now we come down to the two most important numbers that every business owner should know. Is yep. number one, how many customers do I have? right? How many active yeah. customers do I have? It's going to be a little different for every business type, but you got to come up with some baseline um, because, and then the second number you need to know is what's my revenue per customer, which is just mm -hmm. simply your total revenue divided by that first number. Now we can set some goals. Now we can go in the room, Kirby with the team and we can say, okay, we've got a thousand customers right now. If we have the right sales and marketing playbooks in place, and we've got everything aligned and, you know, got our growth engine humming. How, what can we grow that to? Hmm. You know, I think we could grow that to 1200. Okay, great. Now our revenue per customer is $10,000 per year. If we had the right 
sales and marketing playbooks in place, how could we, you know, grow that, grow that revenue per customer by cross-selling them into additional products and services? I would think we could bump that by from 10,000 up to 11,200, whatever, right? Right. Okay. Now take those two numbers, multiply them together, and you've got your goal. And hmm. what companies will usually find is, first of all, it's a realistic goal because it was based on not just the ruler and not spaghetti instinct on the wall. Right, right. It was based on some actual numbers and some actual commitments to net new growth and revenue per client growth. And usually you'll find that number is actually a little bit kind of aggressive. Like it feels good. Yeah. It's bigger than the ruler usually, because when you get net new and cross sell going at the same time, you start to drive exponential growth wow. and not linear growth. And the ruler, my friends, is linear growth. And I like to see the hockey stick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is really good. You know, so obviously you've got your book, Revenue Growth Engine. So where can people find you? Where can people find the book? You'd mentioned your podcast. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, uh, we've got all kinds of free resources. I'm passionate about helping generous leaders grow revenue so they can make an impact. And if you text the word revenue to 21,000, that's revenue to 21,000. Not only will you get immediate access to our free revenue growth toolkit, you'll also um, on there, you can get a copy of the book. I'll sign one, put it in the mail to you if you'll pay shipping and handling. And that's a whole treasure trove of ideas on how to grow your business and build a revenue growth engine. That's cool. Daryl, thank you so much. This has been, we've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time and I really appreciate it. We'll have to do it again sometime. Okay. Awesome. Kirby. Love what you're doing here. Thanks, man. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time. 